Uh, a few more things. The big announcement from uh, President Donald Trump, which happened during the recording of earlier Ken Matthews report segments today on Thursday, December 15th, 2022. So let, let's get right to it. Um, whew, I don't know what this guy's doing. I really don't. And I know I have to be very, 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 very careful because, you know, there are some people, if you question anything about Donald Trump, they'll turn on you. Uh, I understand that. I get it. Um, the interesting thing about this is we did, you know, it's interesting <clears throat> because you'll hear MAGA people defined as fans or supporters or constituents of America Firsters, etc. I don't know the fan thing, and I've and I've called myself that before. The the fan thing, you know, I'm a fan of Trump, etc. I've I've been a fan of Trump, but you know, the last big announcement he had, I I remembered some of the flack I caught. People were pretty upset about it, especially some subscribers. They were upset that I was critical of his hype. And then when we all tuned in, um, I'm going to take that to the 10th power now, nicely. I'm on uh, Truth Social as well, if you want to troll me or follow me. Major announcement from Donald J. Trump. My official Donald Trump digital trading card collection is here. These limited edition cards feature amazing art of my life and career. Collect all of your favorite Trump digital trading cards, very much like a baseball card, but hopefully much more exciting. Go to collecttrumpcards.com and get your cards now. Only $99 each. Would make a great Christmas gift. Don't wait. They will be gone. I believe very quickly. Whew. Dude, what are you doing? Mr. President, what are you thinking? Who is advising you? This is from Forbes magazine. The trading cards priced at $99 and available at collect, uh, collecttrumpcards.com feature cartoon images of particularly machismo Trump dressed, dressed in hunting gear, wearing a Dow hat with a surging stock ticker in the backdrop, playing golf, wearing sunglasses, while standing in front of a Trump world sign and more. In addition to the NFTs, Trump announced a sweepstake contest for a series of prizes, including a dinner in Miami with Trump, a golf outing with Trump, a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Trump, and a memorabilia signed by the former and memorabilia signed by the former president. That that was Forbes. Uh, let's look at a couple of oh, this is a uh, oh, what is this? Uh, I always forget. Hold on, Independent Journal Review. That's right. This is a uh, journalist Bradley Courtright. Trump reveals. His major announcement, and it's unique. I, I, I don't know what to say. Um, I, I, you know, I helped elect Trump twice, but again, I'm really confused by this. So, um, and, and let me tell you why. Uh, you know what's going on in the in the economy. I know Trump does. I know he knows the difference between a good economy and a bad economy. And I'm trying to wrap my head around $99 for a Trump trading card. I, you're running for president, but now I, I get that. Okay. Um, and I was very open about my feelings about that. See, this is the part where people are going to get mad. Ken, you're a traitor. You sold us out. We thought you were a MAGA guy. I am a MAGA guy. I am a Make America Great Again, America First. But what I do not do with anyone is blindly 
go like this to whatever they do. What? I, yeah. No. No. I'm not going to do it. I don't know what the man's thinking 10 days before Christmas. Selling Trump memorabilia and trump palooza and trump alicious and Trump world. Why? Why are you doing this? And why was there so much suspense around it? Do here's what I think. <laughs> I try I'm trying to find the words with this because people, and you know, people that know me personally, you know what a Trump fan I am. And people who listen to me back in the day when I had a radio career, that was about four months ago. You know what a Trump fan I am. So I see this and I say, what the heck are you doing? And here's why. I think the people around you are trying to take you out again, buddy. Could I call you buddy, President Trump? They're trying to take you out. I don't know who gave you this bullcrap advice. But it was bullcrap advice. We're, we're 10 days from one of the worst Christmases economically in history. You know what's causing it. You know who caused it. But we still have January Sixers in jail. And we have people dropping like, I, don't, I, I hate that term. We have people dying from a vaccine. We just had another Australian doctor a cardiologist, come forward. Now, I know a, a lot of the people that are mind-controlled, if you're a branch COVIDian, and you think that everything you hear on NPR and, and others, it's true uh, about the vaccine. We just had another cardiologist. It's not just Spain and Germany and Australia and Austria and South America and all over our own country. We just had an, another uh, Aust Austrian cardiologist saying we must stop doing the COVID-19 vaccine because it's killing people. And I should know I'm a cardiologist, he said. So when you said, President Trump, when you said, I have a major announcement, this is how silly I was. As, as a guy who has supported you since you came down the escalator in 2015 and everybody who knows me knows it, especially my wife. But I never went off the rails blindly because I don't do that. That's what separates me and a handful of other people from others that are trying to get to the truth and share information with people. That's the, that's the secret sauce, by the way. I can't just go, Trump, 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 Trump. Because you, again, have let people that are idiots get too close to you. Whether it's Kevin McCarthy or whether it's some of your advisors or some of your woke millennial gatekeepers. And I don't know who said this would be a great time when people cannot afford stuff like stuff they need. Not the latest PlayStation stuff they need for you to come out and say, hey, man, wouldn't you like to buy a $100 collectible card of me all decked out and cool? No, I wouldn't. I'd rather put the money someplace else. And also, I would pass this on to your, and I know with only 13 listeners, even when I was syndicated, there's probably one person watching this now, but you know what? Maybe that one person will care enough to get a message to you. Stop it. Stop it. We do need your energy. We need your skill set. But the people around you are push directing you in the wrong direction. Now, from what I understand, Mr. President, you are difficult to manage. Um, some of us can relate to that. But I don't know whose idea this was. It was a bad one. I don't care how much money you make off of it. It was a bad one. And let me explain why I think that, and I want to do it respectfully, even to some of your idiot advisors, okay? 
I would have loved if you would have been at the border and called out what's happening at the border. If you would have, I know you've done it before, but when I when I heard you say major announcement, okay, I thought, I bet you he's going to the border. Or, you know what? He is finally going to talk about the vaccines. Nope. Or I would have thought you would have said, how about that Ron DeSantis? He's going after people that exploited the pandemic. Nobody's attacking you, President Trump, over this. I'm just saying that you have a bullhorn over the country. The, the earth does still listen to you. And that was the wrong message, in my opinion. That's all. Now, I will probably lose subscribers from Subscribestar.com because I'm being this candid. And I don't want to. I will never say that to anybody. I don't want I don't want you to leave. Subscribers, you're paying my you're paying the gig now, man. You're keeping this thing going. But I cannot and I will not. I'm not gonna go all Fox Newsy on you. I'm not. I'm just not gonna do it. I'm not gonna tune out issues that I should be locked into and just not in agreement to what I think is some of the dumbest political advice I've ever seen in a long time. And I'm sorry, but I don't know if I bumped my head. I don't remember being knocked unconscious. But anyway, perhaps you'd like to do that and knock me unconscious. But with all due respect, sir, and again, you can ask former producers. You can ask my wife, and she is a a biological female. We've been married 32 years. Everybody that knows me, including my brother, they all know what a big fan I am of yours. But I'm not a blind fan. Now, I don't mean that in the disabled way. I'm just not going to nod in approval every time you do something that weakens what you've already done. And that's what you just did. That's what you just did. I don't know what you were thinking. I thought maybe, maybe I thought you would have said, hey, how about that Derek Evans who was released from uh, federal prison a couple months ago? He's thinking about running for Congress, a free January 6th prisoner. I thought maybe, President Trump, you would have said, hey, take a look at this guy. No, no, I, I, you didn't. I was like, what's going on? Okay, all right. And you know how big the, the border crisis is because you, sir, President Trump, you ran on this. And that's another reason I voted for you and I support you because you still appear to be keeping America and all my fellow citizens first. You still appear... That still seems to be the case. And then some jackleg says, hey, man, we should launch these uh, trading cards. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? I don't know. But it's so bad at the border now that even NBC has decided to do some journalism at the border, and that is so rare. That is extremely rare. Just like me starting a video here, I can't believe it's. Uh, let me close the, the ad. Officials Sorry. On the here other we go. Side of the border, who we've also been speaking. Okay, let me make sure the, the audience. Officials on the here other side of the border, who we've also been speaking with, Jose. They in El Paso, they say they just do not have the resources to deal with this many migrants, and they say it's unsustainable, and they expected the situation here to get even worse with a bigger migrant influx. So this is uh, once again we have network news. Um, usually anywhere from a month to 18 months to two years late on a big story that affects this country. So my advice to you, I, this is what it, and, and, you know, I can't get your people to return my calls. It's never going to happen now because, uh, you know, I only have, uh, 13 listeners now. So 
But my advice to you would be, Mr. President, and I say this with all respect, because, again, I am legitimately a supporter of yours. Now, I'm not a fan every day. I'm not going to. I'm not a fan today, and I wasn't a fan the other night, uh, the 15th, was it, of November? I forget. When did you make that announcement? And we all thought that, you know, we were going to see some people in cuffs, and we thought you were going to blow the lid off of, uh, you know, laptop gate, hunter gate, this gate, that gate. We thought the gates would be blown off. Instead, we got a very focused and calm, palatable, uh, mainstream media digestible uh, announcement, and that was fine. But I, I'm just telling you, sir, as a America firster and someone who does enormous amounts of research, I, I don't just cha- I don't just chase you around. I I still believe that you're one of the best presidents. Okay, I'm just I'm making that clear to you. But I don't know who the hell's advising you. I really don't. Well, I have an idea. I mean, I didn't go to George Washington U- University, and, and uh, you know, I'm not a young buck. Uh, I don't mean buck. Like, I mean like a young buck. You know what I mean. Like a young guy. Okay, so I don't know who's advising you. I don't know who's taking you aside and saying, here's what we should do. Um, I don't. I don't get that. But... My advice would be to you now is go to the hot spots, go to the inflection points, and bring a level of calm and a solution. So like the thing we just saw on the border. See, what I would have done with that, here's what I would have done. I would have I would have went there and I would have done an interview from El, Pas- El Paso, if I were you. If I, was, if I were you. And I would be calm, and I would be collected, because I know you can, and I would be articulate, because I know you can, Mr. President. I've watched it. I've read what you've written. I've seen how you behave. I don't flip out when you piss people off on Twitter. And I would have went to this. I would have went there as a campaign visit because you're running for president now and I would I would have said look at where I'm standing right now and compare it to 2018 how much worse is it going to get you see that's what I meant I would have went if I were you Mr. President I would visit people that are locked up for January 6th. I would go and make a big deal. You know the guy that couldn't get cancer treatment locked up for January 6th? I would have gone, I would visit him, I would mention his name. I would make a trip to some of these incarcerated people. The ones that still haven't been charged. The ones that are in solitary confinement that did nothing violent, they're in solitary confinement. If I were you, Mr. President, I would. And the reason I would is because we supported you and you need to tell your advisors this. Whether it's happening or not, you're beginning to look like you don't care about some of the people. Sorry, let me turn my phone off. Hold on, it's Kevin McCarthy. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Once you start looking like you don't care about the people that brought you to the dance, you know, the same way the Republican Party treats you, if you start to appear that way, many of us are, if I can quote my dad, going to get a hair up our ass. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying it in the most respectful way. So when you said, major announcement Thursday, the 15th, one month after your other major announcement, I thought, this is it. Donald Trump is going to be in Maricopa County. He's going to stand next to Kerry Lake, and he's going to support that state senator that wants the election overturned. But I bet 
even if you wanted to do that, some of your dumbass consultant buddies or advisors said, no, Mr. President, you need to distance yourself from January 6th. You need to distance yourself from uh, a stolen election. You need to distance yourself from the vaccine. That's a mistake. The three biggest problems we're facing right now, well, there's a ton, but the biggies, the bleeding border, which you're an expert at fixing and you did it, the COVID-19 scam, which you managed it a hell of a lot better than Biden, but your advisors didn't want you to get ahead of the damage that some of the vaccines were doing. I know this because it was all over Washington. We're going to keep the president away from, you know, the vaccine stuff because he did get it up and running. Yeah. But somebody should have stepped in and said, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, we had a great system for this, but right now you're not telling people about the side effects. And you shouldn't be forcing people. And you shouldn't be destroying the military either, forcing them to get the vaccine. But somebody is advising you, Mr. President, to stay out of those really really scrappy fights. I don't know who's doing it, but it's a mistake. So my advice is, just a nobody voter, just a citizen journalist, you should have been in, you should have been in Arizona today. And you should have said to Carrie Lake, I, I, I'm standing by you I know this is a grueling battle. I've been in one myself. And as long as you fight, we'll fight with you. And as long as state senators and, and the, the people that you can trust in Arizona government, and there's not many, but as long as those people are willing to get to the truth, like there's a lawsuit now that's amazing. I thought you were going to talk about that. I thought you were going to say, Carrie Lake won. Katie Hobbs' team, they're pooping themselves. Pooping themselves, yeah. And I think that would have been a great quote from you as, as, as a president. Hobbs' team poops itself as request for actual ballot examination moves forward. And they are. You should see the look on their face. The Hobbs' team is freaking out. Because they thought if they just kept beating on Lake, beating on Lake, beating on Lake, she would disappear like Mastriano ran away. Didn't happen. So you got a person out there swinging, hitting, and you were all Carrie Lakey. And that's what I thought you were going to say today. I have a whole list of things you could have announced today, Mr. President. Buying your collectible cards was not one of them. Okay, And I'm the guy that has a Trump mask and a Trump hat and a Trump shirt and a Trump hoodie. Trump, Trump, Trump. Okay? But that was a mistake. And for me to sit here and not comment on it when every day I talk about we need to get to the truth. We have to, we have to be in reality. We have to look at our own people. We have to look at the uh, the opponents, we have to look at America, we have to look at its enemies, we have to look at everything. We can't just blind ourselves for the race because we're, we're not racehorses. We need to take them off because nobody can see what the hell's going on over here. And sadly, some of us are still trapped in that. And I would be I would lose credibility if I didn't speak out on this. And I know a lot of times it's not you, President Trump. I know it isn't you a lot of times. There's been enough leaks and enough information, and I do enough research. God knows I'm not on the inside of anything. I don't have any secret credentials. But I know you've got some real asshats on your team. Still, when are you going to get rid of them? I mean, I'm thrilled you got rid of Kushner. And I'm so glad that Ivanka said, Dad, I can't do this anymore. To me, that was a blessing. But McCarthy? Are you kidding me? 
don't get me started on that because I don't, I, I don't know enough about what's going on inside that political arena to give you political advice, but I can certainly give you advice, <clears throat> excuse me, as a citizen, as a guy who campaigned for you, as one of a dozen radio personalities in 2015 that went on air and endorsed you before any of the other 16 people were blown out of the primaries. And believe me, Mr. President, those of us that did that, we caught crap for it. We had the Ted Cruzers, and I like Senator Cruz, and I even suggested he should be in the cabinet, get him in the cabinet, make him one of your pit bulls in the Senate, whatever. Ben Carson, big fan of Ben Carson. So happy you had him in your administration. It was the wrong place for him to be in your administration. He should have been in health and human services because he's a brain surgeon, not HUD. I get the connection. He's a black guy. He grew up real poor. He made incredible, successful things for himself. He's a brain surgeon, for goodness sake. But the very fact that he is a person of color with that medical degree coming from his background, he could have brought so much more value to health and human resources than HUD. Just my opinion. Again, I'm just a voter, so I know where I stand in this country with both parties. Now, with people that really support you, we all know where we stand. But we've had this wake-up call, sir, over the last few years. And most people that support you still support you because you stay in the fight. That's why we support you, because you stay in the fight. That's why people support uh, the, the Congressional Freedom Caucus, Carrie Lake, Matt Gates. That's why we support those people. Because they get pounded to the ground figuratively. Some literally, like the congresswoman in South Carolina, they get attacked and they get back up. They get framed, they get back up. Their election is stolen, they get back up. They get maligned, they get back up. So, sorry that I had so much expectations of you for this huge announcement one month after your other big announcement. And you know, people really need to understand the heat that you get in and from the MAGA community when you even critique Donald J. Trump. And that's too bad. Because at the end of the day, Mr. President, when you're elected again, if you choose to be, you will work for the people. And that's why I voted for you twice. Because I do believe you work for the people. You were putting the population of the United States above the population of China, above the, above the economies of the EU, above the World Health Forum, above Davos, above all that other garbage. That's what I wanted in a leader. I don't want sellouts like Mitch McConnell and McCarthy, who's a weasel. So I didn't want to get sidetracked. I just, again, I just wanted to give you a few suggestions respectfully. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, you can certainly come on the Ken Matthews Report. And I can tell you right now, Mr. President, that would spike the living hell out of my subscriptions. Holy moly. And it would put my wife at ease. Yeah, because subscriptions trickle in. And anybody's, anybody who has left 40 plus years of broadcasting and said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to build a studio at home and I'm just going to count on people paying me $10 a month. That'll take care of everything, honey. Don't you worry. So that would that would certainly kick it up a notch. You know, so if you want to consider it. But I'm probably not, this message would never get to you because I I trash your gatekeepers so often that I, I just think that, you know, 
I'd literally have to run into you on the golf course, and that's something that only Rush Limbaugh used to do. So I would have to literally run into you to get your ear, uh, which I'm not capable of doing, plus I don't play golf, um, and I only have 13 listeners. So <clears throat> in closing, and I thought this was going to be a short message. My gosh, it's like a rally. But I like your rallies. I've been to your rallies. You've got to make better decisions. Boy, am I in trouble. You've got to make better decisions when you set up an expectation. <clears throat> when you set us up, not literally, you know what I mean. When you say to me, a grown man who openly still supports you and praises your successes from your first term, when you talk to me, and I can speak for several people in my neighborhood, and you build up our expectations, you've got to deliver more than a baseball card or a color print of you and your lovely wife. You've just got to do it. So I don't know whose idea that was. And gosh only knows I'm probably on another crap list already. I'm already on enough list with, you know, the McCarthy crowd and the McConnell crowd and the Lindsey Graham crowd <coughs> and the Pat Toomey crowd, and it goes on. And I really, I don't care because I'm just, I'm just a citizen journalist. I'm just a voter who wants to get to the truth. And uh, again, you can email me directly. If you'd like to, or if you if you don't, whatever. But and there will be more of this. And I thought I did it in a very respectful way. And I can tell you right now, sadly, I will lose some subscribers over this because they'll think, and I can see the emails now, that I've turned and I've gone full commie, and now I want to reelect Joe Biden. Just because I needed to have a talk with you, Mr. President, and you're hard to get a hold of. I'm telling you right now, if you keep making these mistakes based on morons advising you, I don't know if you're going to have the traction you need. It's almost two years. It's just about two years away. Um, in today's world, as you know, sir, respectfully, a lot can happen in a day. In your world, sir... A lot can happen with a tweet. So there's a lot at stake. And I don't need to tell you about the news media because one of the reasons I do still respect you enormously is because you had the stones to take on my industry and call out all the things that myself and some of my colleagues used to try to call out and we were either penalized or ignored for it. But I'm glad you called it out. But I need you to go farther, sir. I need you to go farther. I need you to make trips around the country and support the people that are still fighting for you and for us. And they still are out there. There's plenty of them. In fact, I happen to think they're in the majority because I do believe 2020 was... I think several next. But the fact that we have major action going on in Arizona right now, big stuff. Someone's got to get in there and back those people up. They're not going to get it from the media. You know damn well they're not going to get it from the GOP. Uh, Kevin McCarthy's he's so worried that he's going to lose the Speaker of the House, I think it would do him good, personally. Anyway, I digress. But I would have been embarrassed if I didn't comment on this. How do I put it nice? I, 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 I just, I would have been embarrassed. Sir, I, I, I guess this is, whose idea was this? Seriously, be honest with me. Whose idea was this? No, I love all this stuff. I love all the memes. All you got to do is go, uh, you know, you can check out my social media with a phone call. 
I'm a meme guy. I love all the smart remarks. I love I love El Presidente, El Trumpo. I love all those different. I follow all of them, and it's huge. But truly, you are a candidate for president now. Again. And I think you need to go where you're needed, where your gravitas, which you still have, and your bravado, which is a core part of your personality, sir, can be utilized. El Paso would have been perfect. El Paso, perfect. The next stop I would suggest would be the port of Los Angeles and go there and talk about how effed up Pete Buttigieg, the transportation secretary, has screwed up our supply chain and why there are still all these ships off the coast and what caused it. Those would be two things I would suggest. And there you go. I really enjoyed your first State of the Union address. I thought it was one of the best. I was there. And uh, I thought your inauguration speech was outstanding. I've always thought that. I've always thought that. I'm not kissing your butt, but I always thought that. That was a great inauguration speech. I was in D.C. that weekend when they were blowing stuff up and, you know, breaking stuff. And I just thought, wow, this is going to be a rough ride. But you stuck it out. You got a lot done your first three years. But, and I know it, it must be difficult because I've never been in your shoes ever in my life. It must be difficult to find people you can trust outside your family. But there are some of us, we're out here. There are people you can trust. You just have to go through a different vetting process. You know, we need to get rid of a third of the Republican Party. They're useless. You know that. And the Democrat Party is just flat out dangerous. So if you ever want to fly me down to Mar-a-Lago... And we can have a discussion about this. And I say this respectfully. I'd be honored. I would be honored. I suck at golf. So don't even get me near the golf course. Now, if you want to go shark fishing, I'm sure you have a boat. That would be a hoot. That would be a hoot. And let me tell you that. That would also, do you know what that would do to my subscriptions? If, if I was shark fishing with you and we videotaped it? Oh, my gosh. The banter, the one-liners, sir. Incredible, incredible. It would be outstanding. So those are my comments. And, and I'm saying with, with the hope, because I know I'm going to lose subscribers over this, because there's, there's, a, there's a group of people, unfortunately, uh, just like there are on the far Democrat side, that will not tolerate any type of criticism of their leader. But my comment is, if you're still our leader, then I think you should continue to lead and your visibility should not be a marketing campaign. It should be a support campaign. You should be going around, sir, respectfully, supporting the millions of us that still are in the fight and not marketing any Trump stuff at all. How about that? Yeah, you're a candidate for president now. Do not, I repeat, do not give Joe Scarborough any more ammunition to giggle about this. Don't do it. Don't do it. That should be your whole thing. Your whole thing should be, I'm, I'm going around to these places to support the hardworking men and women that have supported this country, supported my campaign, support America first. It should be support, support, support. Take a break from marketing. We can, we're going to make it. We'd make it the next two years without trading cards of yours. All right. Really, all I have to say, it, it, every time I do a show, I wonder how it will impact my career. I've, I've always thought that for more than 40 years, but especially in the last five months. So this ought to be an interesting one. Uh, I'd love to talk more, but I've got to get this shirt and this blazer back to Dan Bongino. 
So thank you again to my subscribers for tuning in. And if this video ever makes it to uh, President Donald J. Trump, my parents also love you. So be well, and we'll talk soon.